It's really great to be here tonight and we really appreciate that you chose to spend the evening with us and understand a bit more about what your credit union is doing. As Sean mentioned earlier, and in keeping with what we did last year, we really want this next section of our presentation to be more informal and a casual conversation to share with you what your organization is up to. And as you know, we have a unique model in that our member experience is really delivered through our regional brands. So with that, I'd like to invite Paulette Rennie, the president of the Valley First Region, to join me on stage. Hey, Paulette, how are you Hi. doing? Hi, excellent, That's thank great. you. It's great to be here tonight, and it's great to see a lot of uh, staff and members, from familiar faces, and a few new ones. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight. Wow, that's bright. <laughs> <laughs> so Paulette, uh, First West and Valley First had a really exceptional year, as Tom shared, around our membership growth in 2012. And that not only did we exceed our own targets, we really are leading the pack as it relates to credit unions across Canada, which are really showing flat to, in some cases, negative membership growth. So what would you attribute your success to membership growth in the Valley First region? Yeah, that's a good question, thank you. Um, I believe that what sets us apart from anyone is our people. And the relationships that they build with our members, these relationships allow them to get to know them, to help them make the right decisions in their financial lives. And so our branch teams, both the branch and the insurance team, truly do get to know our members. And of course, it's not without great products. You have to have good competitive products in the marketplace. And this past year, it was exceptional. We delivered out two great uh, innovative products, the first one being our Simply Free account and our unlimited business checking. And they were both introduced last year, and uh, they're just like no other products, especially here in the Okanagan in the Valley First region. So with that, and um, with this type of relationship um, approach, as well as these products, we saw a real surge in the number of referrals that both our staff and members are making to Valley First. So it was really great. Um, we set ourselves a target last year. We said that we would like to see 1,700 new people uh, join, new members join our credit union. And as usual, uh, we knocked that one out of the park and saw 2,269 new members join Valley First. So we're really pleased with that. So that's really uh, outstanding, uh, Paulette, and I couldn't agree with you more that it's such, um, a, uh, such a testimony to the great team that you have here uh, in the local region. So we talked a little bit about last year in terms of what drove those type of results, but if we look forward into 2013, What's, what's in store? Yeah, can't stop. <laughs> can't rest on your laurels at all, especially in today's world of technology and competition. So yeah, absolutely, we're gonna continue this year offering some new innovative products. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to introduce, uh, um, coming soon, is uh, two new uh, special product, the uh, Home Suite bonus account, as well as the after grad bonus account. They're terrific new products that'll be rolling out uh, very shortly. Now, let me just quickly explain what those, uh, what those look like. With the Home Suite bonus account, it's basically designed for our members who are potentially looking to buy a home and to start saving now. So if you put aside a minimum of $100 per month, and at the end of three years, you'll get a $1,000 bonus towards a Valley First mortgage. So that's pretty great for people trying to save for a house. And the after grad bonus program is to help our young people, our children save for the education that they'll be facing, the expenses they'll be facing down the road. And that is simply, again, open up an account before your child is 12 years of age. And if you deposit a minimum of $100 per month, when they turn 18, we will add a $1,000 bonus to that account towards their education. So we're really, really thrilled about that. We think it's a great opportunity. You know, as I was listening to you speak, I was just thinking about the slide that Sean had put up earlier about the reason for our being, which is to make a real difference in the financial lives of our members. And I think of those two new products. 
where we're really helping to give back to our members in that way. I think uh, you and your team are really doing some great stuff. Yeah. I agree. So I agree. you and I have had lots of conversations about another focus and change kind of in the region. It's around that sort of advisory sales mm -hmm. model. So maybe you can talk a little bit about what that means and what we have in store for the future with that. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, over the past 18 months, uh, we have really changed the way we deliver wealth management services at Valley First. And we have added more expert advice right into your home branch. Our personal banking offers and officers now have the ability to provide good investment advice and to be able to sell an array of uh, wonderful wealth management products. And to even add to that, we have investment specialists that work in partnership right in the branch with them so they can help uncover other opportunities and provide for you uh, uh, all the different wealth products. And we still have our financial planners in the branches too. And they can help us even more with insurance products and uh, brokerage products. So it's, uh, it's great. I would encourage everyone here tonight who has not had an investment plan done by one of our staff members to please make an appointment and take the opportunity. You'll be glad you did. And you know, in the spirit of uh, um, innovation and uh, technology, we uh, tried to keep our uh, promise of keeping it simple for our members as well. And we revamped our website, our Valley First website. So again, if you haven't had the opportunity, uh, I encourage you to go in and have a look. It's simpler, it's easier to navigate in, and you can find all the information you need on our, uh, on our products. Yeah, the website uh, is exceptional. I was just on it the other day, in fact, and when you go across the top and you just sort of move your mouse mm -hmm. over bank, borrow, invest, and insure, it just pops up. It's so easy to yeah. navigate. It's, it's really, really good. So what else, though, in, is coming up this year from an online perspective? Well, again, on the innovation theme, uh, later this year, we're looking to introduce what we're going to call the next generation of online banking. And it actually is it's a, it's a fabulous service that you'll be able to log right into your home banking, and you'll be able to um, personally manage your finances. So you'll be able to track your transactions, you'll be able to categorize your spending, and uh, keep track of those budgets. So uh, yeah, there's no more big spreadsheets or, or other software products. You can do it right through your own banking terminal. Oh wow, that, that's super efficient. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about efficiencies, and we've been talking a lot about online and technology, which really is um, very much a highly competitive and moving area. But our branches are still really important. I mean, we have so many personal connections and members that live close and local in those areas and meet with our, our, our staff there on a regular basis. So what's happening with the branching network? Because it still remains a viable area and way that we want to make sure that we're providing that right level of investment. So we opened some new branches recently. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about those new branches and, and how they're doing. It's been a huge year for us. Uh, it's an incredible investment that we've done in this past year. We've added a new branch in uh, the North Shore of Kamloops called River Bend. And we've, uh, we had an insurance operations, um, uh, Emslin, sorry. <laughs> Sto no, sorry. Um, Emslin. It's Valley First Insurance now. That was really important. <laughs> it's all Valley First. It doesn't really matter. It was Simmons, Black, <laughs> Black and, and Emslin. Emslin. My apologies uh, to the staff for that. Um, it's a mouthful. And we rebranded it to Valley First Insurance Services. So it was a, it was a really special month in March. Uh, we were able to have two grand openings uh, on the same day for both of those locations. And then we did another quieter opening in March for our new Rutland branch. It's, uh, it has uh, a wonderful uh, location on, on uh, uh, highway, highway 33 and Rutland Road. Uh, it's called Valley First Place. And these, uh, these locations were able to bring our insurance operations right into the branch. So we had another uh, off-site insurance called Stoby Insurance. It was formerly Stoby Insurance that has now moved into the branch in Kelowna. So it's great. And the, the locations in the first month of operation, so as of March 31st, we had uh, in Riverbend in Kamloops, we had 118 new members join. We had $837,000 
$1,000 in mortgages and loans. We had $641,000 brought in on deposits. So pretty good for that first month. And then Rutland did the same thing. Even though it was a quiet opening, they still added 173 new members to the branch. They ended up with $4.2 million in loans wow. in the first month and 655 in deposits. So both locations have already exceeded our budget expectations, so we're really proud. Yeah, that's exceptional. You know, I've been in the credit union system for three years and have been in um, development of a retail nature. And to in the branch world, it takes years to get sort of your payback, and you're already way ahead to mm -hmm. sort of uh, get some really good targets mm -hmm. there. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I also heard some great things about the grand opening, particularly around uh, Valley Place in terms of just some great neighborhood connections. The community was out. The mayors, I mean, just yeah. fantastic. So congratulations on what that looks like and really helping us to start something new. Yeah. And speaking of new, <laughs> uh, in our Kamloops branch, we, uh, we wanted to pilot something different. And that was people change the way they do their banking. So we wanted to figure out how do we get them to you? So we are actually piloting a new position and uh, we're calling it our mobile virtual branch. Uh, so we have a, a personal banking officer that will come to the member and uh, be able to on the spot do a mortgage application, open up account. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and further to, uh, to Sean's comments earlier, the biggest news though is Valley, isn't Valley First News, it is about us having the addition of Enderby and District Financial into the First West family. It's, uh, as a matter of fact, I believe we have, I know we have three of our uh, Enderby team members here tonight, as, as Sean said earlier, but I'd like to put them on the spot in the sunlight there. And uh, just like to welcome Ted Morrison, our branch manager in, in Enderby, uh, Quinton Bruins and Melanie King Campbell, who will now be our newest uh, regional council members. So welcome. <laughs> Having Enderby is such a natural fit to just join into the Okanagan uh, uh, region. Uh, it's just a, a, a small distance between some of our other branches and we'll be able to do some great things in a new community. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, again, we couldn't be more thrilled and, uh, and really enjoy the partnership that we have with uh, our, our new team members. Mm -hmm. So Paulette, we've talked a lot about the new products and the new services and really some of the ways that we're really looking at how we become more relevant for our members. But what's it been like for our employees? Because that means there's a lot of change, right? We, we, and we talk about that we need to do a lot of change, but maybe give me a sense or share with um, our, our members here how we're working and helping our people through change. Yeah. Well, it's no secret, I love bragging about our staff. So, I mean, we have a fantastic team of employees. And it's also no secret that uh, we've gone through a lot of change. And we've asked a lot of our employees over the last couple of years. You know, we still have to make sure, though, that we're delivering competitive products and services that our members demand. So in order to manage the external pressures that we have in the marketplace, you know, we have to look at new ways of doing things, much like you heard Tom say. So this, of course, means asking our employees to start something new or to change the way they do business uh, than they have in the past. So um, we have just completed our second employee engagement survey. Uh, we don't know the results yet, but the really great news was 90% of First West employees across all regions uh, took the time to fill out the survey. So we're pretty excited to, uh, to hear their feedback. We will develop action plans for, for areas that uh, we need to do improvement for so that we can make sure that they have everything they need to provide our members with the exceptional service. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, I just wanted to mention with change is sometimes the word change can sometimes create a negative, uh, a negative impression. Uh, however, it also creates great opportunities and it creates opportunities for our members and all the products and services we've been able to deliver out and it also has provided a lot of our staff many growth opportunities. Yeah, I agree. I know that uh, since we've done the merger, which was uh, effective January 1st, 2010, so in the last three years, we've had 
370 of our people received promotions and another 411 have been able to take on additional or new jobs. So I think it's really showing an ability to grow your careers and you don't have to move and really take on some expanded responsibilities. I also know that uh, we've had a real strong focus on how we can provide learning development. And so 60% of our people in 2012 received some sort of additional learning besides the technical stuff that you, you have to, to know for the role. So we're, we're pretty pleased about working towards that and how we can even do more of that. Yeah, you know, it's without an amazing team, we wouldn't be able to serve our members in the manner of which we do. And, you know, we have a lot of staff here tonight. So I would just like to take a moment tonight to say a big thank you to all of our staff for their commitment and everything they do for this organization and for the communities that we serve. So thank you so much. Hey, no, Paulette, our staff are key in terms of being the, the, the local ambassadors in their regions and are really such a big, integral part of our community investment. So let's just switch gears a little bit because they're the natural extension and the natural face to that. How are, how are we doing around our community investments? I know we've given some more, so maybe you can just share with our membership about where we've been um, focusing our, 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 our money and our attention in that regard. Yeah, and I think most people that are in this room already know that mm -hmm. uh, our community investment activities are all focused on hunger-related initiatives. And so we have our signature cause, which is Feed the Valley. You saw the shopping cart out there. Last year, our employees again added another incredible $148,000 cash to food banks, to local food banks, and 19,000 19, pounds of food delivered right to the doors. Um, this was uh, driven by a tremendous partnership between our branches, our, our members, and our local community members. And we had a 65th anniversary challenge on last year. So I would just like to say that in the three years when we launched Feed the Valley in 2010, since that time, we thought we would raise a million dollars in the first 10 years. That was our goal. But in the first three years, we have already raised $464,000 cash and 39,000 pounds of food into the local bank, into the, each food bank of uh, all the communities in which we serve. So, you know, I just, you know, this is, this is not donations uh, by way of checks from Valley First or First West. These are dollars raised by our staff and our members and food donated. So thank, thank you, everyone. Yeah. It's just so huge. <laughs> and over the next few months, we get to extend it even more by offering Feed the Valley into the Enderby community. So now we can support the Enderby Food Bank as well. So we've just continued to, to include yeah. that reach. So it's wonderful news for us. And education, education has always been a huge um, investment for Valley First. And uh, over the past 13 years, Valley First has contributed through bursaries and scholarships over $300,000. And now we have the First West Foundation and the Valley First Endowment, so we get to make even a bigger impact. And over the past two years, we've been able, through granting, to disperse another $82,000 throughout the region. So I just think it's incredible. I'm incredibly proud. And again, good news for Enderby. And that is that they have now established an endowment fund for, for en Enderby as well. Um, and they will start granting next year. So it's just another great opportunity to reach into a new community. Well, that's just fantastic news, um, Paul. And you know, the Feed the Valley and all the great success that you've had with all of your staff and what they've done, um, and the membership has really helped us take a, a similar cause and, 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 and develop one in the Envision region called the Full Cupboard. So we really learned from mm -hmm. just how you guys have done it so right. So really kudos, really great. So Paulette, um, wow, I mean, uh, I've been sitting here for the last 15, 20 minutes just hearing some pretty incredible results. So I really wanna thank you and what you and your team are doing because it's pretty amazing. And I think what's really great is the focus back onto our, our membership and, and being more relevant. So thank you for sharing your time. Thanks. And uh, with that, I'm gonna ask, I think turn it back over to Sean thank to you. go through the Q&A. Thanks. Okay.